Today I've got a Nintendo Switch with no signs of life. So we are going to plug it into our meter here and see if it wants to accept any power. So if you watch over here, you will see that we have 15 volts coming in. So it does recognize the charger, but we're only pulling point, roughly 0 0.08 amps. So that is interesting. I've already plugged it into the computer and it is not in RCM mode, which I kind of figured it wasn't. So let's uh, take a look at the charge port. All right, so we've got a little bit of lint, a little bit of debris inside the charge port, uh, but nothing in the way of damage. Let me take a look at the other side here. Yeah, so most importantly, no bent pins. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and take a look on the inside. So what I generally do is disconnect the battery from the terminal here because we want to know what is being delivered right over here where the device is charging. So I'll put my multimeter in voltage mode, uh, excuse me, DC voltage mode. We will go ahead and connect the power and then we can kind of start to eliminate uh, different things. You know, if we've got no power here, then obviously something between the port and here has an issue. And I will put my black probe over here on ground and the positive terminal is going to be the uh, actually the two for this to the left. And you can see we've only got 0 0.06 volts coming through here. So that is definitely not going to allow the battery to charge. And the next thing I usually try is this coil right here. This is going to give us an indication of what kind of power is getting to this point. And we are getting the same thing there. So I'm going to have to get this under the scope for you to see uh, the rest of this. So let me switch back over. Okay, so we're going to switch the meter over to continuity mode just to rule this out. This is very rare, but occasionally you will have an issue with this fuse right here above the charge port. And why am I not beeping? Because I am in diode mode. All right. So from here to here, we should have a beep, and we do. From this point, I'll usually proceed up to the charging IC. Ah, you can't see it, can you? Let's see. Come on. M92T36, right up here. We will go ahead and go back into diode mode, which is where I want it to be for this one. And put the red probe on ground this time. And we're going to use the black probe and start over here. I usually start with this cap right here. That's showing about 425. That's good. Right above it. This one is 459. Good. Over here we've got 344. Point uh, about 500 ish. This is 344. And then I believe this side, we're going to have 485. And on this one, we've got 0.6. And that is kind of scary because the last cap that we checked for this, um, for this charging IC is right here. And fortunately, we have 0.362. Because if this cap is shorted, you are going to have a pretty good chance of failure as far as repairing this goes. So I'm going to move down here because what this will usually tell me is that there probably is not an issue with this charging IC. And there's probably not an issue with the uh, video encoder on the other side, the P13 USB, because it will usually manifest as a short over on this lower left-hand capacitor here. So we're going to go back down to where the battery terminal is. And we're going to check, uh, first of all, let's check the battery terminal just out of curiosity, also in diode mode. And on this pin, we have 0.2-ish. I will next move over and check this coil right here. This is important. We should be able to get four volts coming through here. And if this is going and saying 0 0.002, we are definitely not going to get the sufficient voltage coming through this coil into the secondary charging IC, which I'm starting to suspect may be the issue. Uh, if you take a look here, this is the BQ24193, and this one I don't know, it looks a little dirty or something. That's going to be my next suspicion as far as where the issue will be. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the motherboard out. And we will go ahead and pop in a new one of those because these are also known to go bad. Now just a quick note here. Um, we could just remove this coil here and then figure out whether the short is on this side or this side. 
I'm basing my decision on experience, just knowing that uh, this is pretty common to fail. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull this chip off and then we'll check and see if the short is gone. And if it is, we should be able to just drop another one of these in here and be done, hopefully. We'll see what happens. All right, I should have taped off this connector. can usually get away with this. Got a little close to it, that's okay. So I'm gonna check, put this in uh, continuity mode so you can hear if we get a beep since I'm not on screen. And we are good. I'm gonna check this in diode mode. Phone's ringing. Okay, so now we have uh, 0.348 on each side. It's going to be the same, obviously. And I'm going to put another charging IC on here. And I think our connector will be okay. But you got to be careful around those. They melt pretty easily. Yeah, I think we got it. Go ahead and get this back on the charger and see what's going on. All right, so did that solve our problem? Go back to voltage mode here, plug in our motherboard, and let's see what we're getting at the battery terminal. We know the short is gone. And there is our 4.1. I'll go ahead and put the board back into the console and we should be fixed. All right, so what I usually like to do here is just connect the battery. We won't go through the entire reassembly process until we know that everything's working. And if we plug in our charger right here, we are only pulling, uh, I know it's off screen, we're only pulling about uh, 0.1 amps at the moment, but that's probably because the battery is very low. It is in fact at 2.7 volts. So I'm gonna leave this plugged in for a bit. As you can see though, the voltage is increasing and if we flip it over, you always wanna make sure this is charging both directions. And once we get it to power up, we'll do one last test and that is to make sure that our video output is working properly because few things are worse than getting a switch put all together and then realize that, eh, you just have to take it apart for some other problem. But as you can see, the battery's charging. I'll be back in a few minutes. 
All right, let's see where we are over here. We are at 4.1 volts, so our battery should be sufficiently charged. And this is going to be the tricky part, so I wanted to show you my final test, and that is to make sure that we have video output. So if you get one of these little adapters, or obviously, um, well, basically I would recommend this because putting this in a dock is not going to be easy. So I'm going to plug this in, and then I'm going to have to switch my output on my HDMI port so that you can see it. Alright, so I'm going to, to do a swap here because I don't have an HDMI switch connected. We've got our OEM charger on this side. Plug in our HDMI here. And what I'm going to have to do is unplug my overhead camera and swap it over to the game output. So hang on tight for a second there and let's see what we get. All right, so for some reason, we are upside down. That's interesting. All right, rotate 180 and done. All right, so as you can see, we now have an image. I'm going to, like I said, I can't really show you this, but I'm going to flip over the uh, port here, plug it in upside down so we make sure the USB output is working on both sides, and we are ready to go.